Hey Stitch Cuties, it's Brittany here with Stitches of Love Quilting and welcome to the video tutorial using your embroidery machine to make the block 11, which is the fall block of your loads of fun block of the month. Is that not so cute? It's gonna be fun to make. So as always, read through your pattern and with the help of your placement guide and your reverse applique pieces, organize your applique pieces so I have them in order of how I'm going to iron them on over on the side. And then of course I've laid out all my beautiful rayon threads. These are the sulky 40 weights in order of how I'm going to stitch with them. And then a reminder, when we get to the full lane thread at the end, we're gonna switch from our regular um, embroidery needle, the size 7511 that we do on our projects. We're gonna switch to a larger needle, the 116, that has a larger eye on the needle to accommodate that filleting thread. And when we get to that, we'll also slow our machine down. Sorry, I almost couldn't speak. So now with that being said, let's get started. On the first step, we have our placement guidelines. And so we are going to simply take our fabric, pull off it right down where it's centered, and you make sure you have fabric going past the top and bottom of your stitch lines, and then it's centered in your hoop. I'm gonna use my little sew tights to hold this in place, easy peasy, and just put it right at the edge. There you go. You can do several of them if you want. I usually just do, sometimes I do two, sometimes I do four, it just depends. Today I'm feeling crazy, I'm gonna do two. There we go, so that's holding it in place. We're gonna continue on with our white thread on our machine for our first round of applique outlines. Alrighty, so we have our first round of applique outlines. As always, I turn my hoop sideways so it lays on my steady bedding nice in front of me. You can go in and remove your sew tights or your tape, however you were holding your pieces on. Let me just turn that the right way, there we go. And now we're gonna do our first round of applique ironing of our pieces on. So that is step eight, or I'm sorry, step nine of your pattern. So you'll follow along a numerical order. So first up is going to be the little rear view mirror. So we'll put this in place. By right now you're on block 11, you're like, oh my gosh, I know how to do this. Easy peasy, right? And then we have our three pieces of the little top of the truck. And again, you just always wanna make sure you do it in numerical order because every now and then you do have pieces that over and underlap, like when we get to the pumpkin in the neck, right here, there's over and underlap. So you just, if you go in numerical order, you never have a problem. Then we're gonna do, this is the very top, this is 2B. Isn't this a cute fabric? I love it. I think it's called hay or straw is the color, something like that, it's super cute. All the skews on the plaids now, I used to have all the skews memorized on these. Goodness me, I just cannot memorize them. <laughs> Can't keep up with the names, there's so many of them. This is the right side of our truck the right side of the top of our truck, I should say. There we go. Now our big old pumpkin, super cute. Love it. It goes right here. And again with a big piece, just make sure it's in on all sides. There we go. Give it a Prius. Now for the neck, well, oh, we're not to the neck yet. It's right beside there, but there are two pieces for that. Let's see, 15 and 16. The tires are just a smidge different, so always make sure you pay attention to that. But like I was saying about the little scarecrow neck and all of the flesh-colored pieces on him, they're double-lined. So you'll have two of each of those pieces, like two of his face, two of his neck. I guess that's all the flesh he has. And then... So now we'll put this little piece of stick, his left arm. Boop, just make sure you get it turned. Oh, I had it the right way. It's not a perfect rectangle, it's like kind of askew. So make sure you get that turned the perfect way. And now the double lining of our scarecrow neck. When I was a kid, I was like a really big trend, and maybe it still is, but you would make, like we made scarecrows, it was so fun, and we had a boy and a girl scarecrow for the fall every year, and they had like real clothes on, like overalls and the whole thing. They were so cute, and I think mom like sewed the face and like stuffed them, and then they had like straw hair coming out. 
They were just adorable. They were really cool. I remember really liking those as a kid. I think the girl one, she actually like sat in the house for a while because it was so cute. There we go. So now we have our first round of applique outline. So we're gonna continue on with white thread for the next round. Alrighty, so time to iron on our next round. So again, make sure you're going in numerical order. So we are gonna start with the pumpkin stem right at the top. So cute, I love this little block, this whole quilt, honestly. So, so cute. And then you wanna make sure this is number six. So you wanna make sure you put that on before number seven. Look at that, I can't, it, you see it? I can't get my nail right there. Ah, I need to get my nails shortened. This is comical, oh my gosh. Don't admit defeat. <laughs> Look at it, it's coming off, but I can't get my hands there. There we go. That was funny. Sometimes those small pieces, they'll get you. Okay, and with this, he's got a lot of little pokies. So make sure that you have him perfectly in place. So I'm just gonna give it a little tap here and then just work my way around. There we go. Now we're gonna put on the stalk of the corn. We were in um, Georgia driving, actually to go pick up vegetables from a farm. And I just love when you drive by like cornfields. They're so just, I don't know, American. There's something about a big old field of corn that looks so just delicious and beautiful. Also, I love corn on the cob. Who doesn't, right? There we go. Perfect. Now we're going to put on our big truck bed. There we go. Also very American if you think about it. Although, sometimes in Europe, you see a bunch of trucks. It depends on which country you're in. It's always kind of shocking. All right, so there we go, right in place. It's starting to look like something, as they say. <laughs> there we go. Now we have the first little piece of our little crow. How cute is this little guy? He's got a little fat belly. Super cute. At our last office, it was so funny. We had this crow that kept coming and, like, tapping on the front windows or like floor to ceiling and it was the weirdest thing but I never saw it anytime I would go to the front my office was in the back anytime I would go to the front I would never see it it's like I never saw that crow everyone in the house in the office was like oh my gosh that's crow weirdest thing and then they say they're really smart by the way they like figure out how to open containers and all that good stuff so there we go and now what is this oh it's his hat Super cute. So this is the last piece we're ironing on right now for this round. So we'll continue on with the white thread for the next round of applique outline. So with a piece, the um, step number that we're on right now is what, 11? And so up next, we'll be ironing on for step 13. Look at that, it's looking cute. <laughs> Alrighty, time to iron on another round of pieces. So up first is piece number five the big green leaf on our pumpkin. Let me put that right in there. And now we're gonna build more on our corn stalk. These are all different, so you do wanna read your numbers, that how you've numbered your piece. So we have number eight. So good. Man, I really wanna grill some corn on the cob this weekend. Eight, 10, is this next one up here. I do love um, corn on the cob. The farm I mentioned a minute ago, when we saw the corn, we were on the way to pick up like tons of vegetables. They like process them, like blanch them or whatever you do, and then they freeze them. And oh my goodness, we bought so many vegetables. We even have them in the freezers here at the office in the refrigerators. It's hilarious how many vegetables we have. So I say I want corn on the cob this weekend, but I gotta eat the corn from the freezer first. <laughs> from the farm where we saw the corn. Kind of funny. All right, and now our bumper. You guys can probably do this in your sleep now, huh? We've built so many trucks together. Only one more to go after this one, that's sad. What's on the Christmas one? Is Santa on that one? You think I would remember? I can't remember right now. I know he's cute. I think there's a Christmas tree. Seems right, right? We'll find out when we make the next month together. I truly forgot. That's terrible. I'm getting old, y'all. I don't remember things. Now we're going to put our license plate 
the white part on. And remember, it's double lined because we want to make sure that we cover those cute stars behind it on the background fabric. There we go. Super cute. There we go. And now we are going to do the little belly of our guy. And it's not a perfect circle. So make sure, yep, that way, that you have it going the right way. There we go. Right in place, little guy. Wait till we get to his feet. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. And then his head of our little crow. There we go. And then we're gonna start working on this little guy's arm. We have the little piece of wood over here. There we go. Just like so. And then our little arm. And now when it comes to the hat, you'll notice on the hat that you have, whoop, what am I doing? Do I have the wrong sleeve? That's the wrong one. I put it in the wrong palette. Look, I need this sleeve. Ooh, I almost made a boo-boo. There we go. That's the right, that's the right sleeve. If it doesn't fit, you know you picked up the wrong piece. So that's easy enough to fix. Get the other one. There we go. When it comes to the little brim of the hat, you have two pieces. You have a white, and then you have the one with the cute little jade lines on it, that fun little green kind of color. So of course you're gonna put the white one down first. We're double lining that. Even though it's not a solid white on top, we're doing the solid on the bottom because if we did two with those jade lines, there's no way to guarantee those jade lines line up on top of each other, right? So you do white on the bottom and then the cute print on top. Fun trick for anything you're doing with applique. Any kind of like weird print and you don't wanna, you know, risk distorting the print. Okay, there we go. We got all the pieces ironed on for this step. So we'll continue on with the white thread and on to the next. Alrighty, time to iron. And I must say this step, we have a lot of little pieces, so we can do it. <laughs> okay, so first up, we're going to finish off our corn. So we have numbers nine, 11, and 13. And again, these are all different. So make sure that you use that placement guide and your reverse applique piece page to get them numbered appropriately. So here's number 11. Doo -doo -doo. And I think when we get to the little small eyeballs, you can see I have my little four in one tool handy dandy sitting up there. I might just need to use that, especially with like the little eyeballs and stuff. I always find that easier. All right, and then this piece. There we go. Now our license plate, the outside edge. There we go. <laughs> We're um, Florida State Seminoles here in Tallahassee. That's where I'm alumni from, for undergrad. And my husband got us new license plate things to go around the car because we're approaching football season, I should say. And um, the one he ordered for my car, we didn't know how glittery it was. <laughs> so I can't put it on my car because y'all, it was so, it was comical. It was very, very glittery. His is beautiful that he got. So I was like, why don't you order one just like that for my car? When I say it's glittery, it's actually funnier. I like sat it on the counter in the kitchen. I was like, maybe if you step back, it doesn't look as glittery. Y'all, it got somehow more glittery. <laughs> it was really funny. So no glitter tags on my car, I must say. I'm just turning this to see, make sure I have the right way before I peel my little backing. So here we go. See, we're getting these little small pieces. It might be, might be wise for me to get out my little Alex Anderson tool. Let's see, did I get it? Maybe it does go this way. I'm gonna check myself. There's nothing wrong, y'all. We're just turning it and checking yourself. I didn't write the little, oh no, I had it right. I didn't write the arrow. You know my little trick where I draw the arrow up on the placement guide so that I know I don't question myself again? I didn't do that on these pieces and maybe I should have. 
See, I should listen to what I advise. <laughs> okay, now, y'all, I'm just gonna get this out. I'm getting it ready. We are gonna do our eyeballs. So we have 25 and 26. They're right next to each other. So just take your time. They're double lined. So you get to put down four of these fun circles. I'm gonna get my little, I'm even going to the stiletto part. It just helps me get it in place, but then you gotta not pull it off. There we go, there's one. Let's get the second one. We can do this, you guys, we can do it. There we go. I kind of dropped him right in place, that's nice, huh? He feel right where he belongs. There we go. One more time. <laughs> we get to do it again. All righty, our little eyeball there. Do, 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 do. There we go. One more eyeball. Whoo! I'm gonna sweat. <laughs> you know, it's funny in the studio, we keep the, it has its own, you know, there's a bunch of air conditioners in the building, so it has its own control. And when we're not filming, we keep it at 78 in here. And I forgot, as I've been filming today, to turn it lower. So when I say I'm breaking out into a sweat, I actually mean it. I'm breaking out into a sweat, y'all. What am I doing? That fell off. Ugh. Don't show me a seam ripper. Although, when you need a seam ripper, this guy I keep by my sewing machine at home. And it's a really good seam ripper on this guy. Hopefully, you don't have to use it very much. I mean, you don't on applique, which is nice. Um... Every now and then, though, at home, I'll sew something, like, the wrong piece or whatever. Or if my seam allowance, honestly, I'm quite picky with my seam allowance. As if my seam allowance, for whatever reason, I, like, go wonky or something like that. I mean, it's rare. But if I do, I fix it. Because if you don't fix the problem, then it just, like, grows throughout your quilt. And then all of a sudden, borders and stuff don't work. So, do be particular about your piecing. We have a good tutorial on that. On, like, picking your quarter-inch seam and all that good stuff. My, my machine at home is, uh, for sewing machine, is the M7, Janome M7 Continental. It is my all time favorite sewing machine in the whole wide world. I just love it. And it makes my quarter inch seams just a breeze. And the foot on it, I just love it. Can't say enough good things, big fan. There we go. All right, look, we almost have a scarecrow. He's like halfway done. So now we're gonna continue on with white thread. And on to the next step. Alrighty, this is such an easy step. We are gonna do the little handkerchief scarf. Again, just like the brim of the hat, we have white to double line. So we're gonna put that down first. Get that in place. There we go. And then this super cute little jade print, little lines, they kind of look like tire marks to me on there. I think that's originally when we were ordering this, we were like, oh, it kind of looks like tires which fits in with the whole theme, right? Loads of fun in a truck or a Jeep. It can be whatever vehicle you want. I've gone back and forth the whole time on what kind of car it is. And now we have the face of our scarecrow. And again, it's gonna be double lined. Two of the same piece, same color. There we go. And then we have just two more steps after this before we get to all our fun color changes. That's always so fun, right? To watch the machine do all the stitching for you because then your work is over. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's continue on to the next step. Alrighty, so on this step, our little scarecrow is gonna have a face. Super cute. Again, little pieces, be careful with them. So up first is number 37. That is his left eyeball. Get that little guy right in place. So cute and little. Oh my goodness, that's a little piece. Then number 38, it's his nose. I'm gonna say he's kind of got a big nose, this guy. And then there we go. And now his right eye, number 39. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. Aren't you glad the machine stitch in this for you? Because that's a little piece to stitch around. And you'll see the stitches, we take them down obviously smaller. Because otherwise, if you did the full length stitch, my goodness, his little eyeball would just be stitching. It would disappear. 
There we go. Now we are going to do piece number 40. Well, let's do piece number 40. Yeah, picked up 41. So that is the right side of his hair right here. So just get that right in place. Perfect. Now we'll do number 41, the left side of his hair. Toot, toot. Don't know like that instead of originally, Julie had like individual little pieces layered and I was like, no, no. Let's not have that many small pieces to pick up. So we changed it to this. And we just do accent stitching to make it look a little layered, right? To make it look like more than one piece. And now, little top of his hat. So cute. This is a denim blossom. I love this color, the denim blue. It's really cute. All right, so let me get that in place all the way around. There we go. And I just iron as I go over. Perfect. Look how cute he is, you guys. Oh my gosh. And his little mouth is stitched, obviously, so he'll get a face. So now we just have two more little steps of the sunflower and then the center of the sunflower. So let's keep on going. Alrighty, so we have the sunflower and I wanna show you, remember I mentioned my arrow trick. I know you've heard me talk about it. When I put this on the placement guide, I turned it a million times until it was in place and I drew myself an up arrow. So I'm going to make sure that my up arrow was right. There we go. And I am going to peel my backing off kind of while I'm just like covering over it. There we go. Look at that easy peasy. That way while you're on your actual piece, you're not turning this flower around a million times. I do that all the time. Remember I didn't do it on the feet and I wish I would have. So anytime there's like a weird kind of piece, just draw yourself an arrow. It's very helpful. And then, there we go, I'll give him a little press. There we go. So now one more step and it's going to give us the outline for the center of the flower. Alrighty, time to put that flower center in. And it's a perfect circle. The <laughs> easiest piece you're putting on all day. There you go. So let's take a look at what your hoop should look like right now. I mean, is that not just so stinking cute, you guys? Oh my gosh. Okay, so now for the following steps, I'm gonna take my hoop on and off and discuss all the beautiful thread color changes. For you though, on your machine, you don't need to take your hoop on and off. You're just gonna simply be doing your thread changes. And then a reminder, when we get to the filleting, we're gonna slow the machine down and we're gonna put on that larger needle. All right, so let's get started. First up, we're gonna um, continue on with white. And of course, the little eyeballs on our crow. And then the hat brim and the handkerchief scarf will be stitched in white. Alrighty, take a look. We've got some eyeballs. We've got some accents going on on our little scarecrow. So now we're going to change to 1218 silver gray. And your machine is going to do the stitch around your rear view mirror and your bumper. Alrighty, so we've got a rear view mirror and a bumper. Now it is time to load 1056 medium tawny tan and several, several, several numbers, including your little cute face on your scarecrow are going to stitch in medium tawny tan. Alrighty, we have a lot stitched. Take a look, your little scarecrow has a cute little smile and face. Adorable, whole bunch stitched there for you. Now um, it is time to load 1833 pumpkin pie and you're gonna have like your little nose stitched, a little bit of your pumpkin stitch. It's gonna be super cute. Alrighty, take a look. You got a little crow nose and a pumpkin. Now we are going to load 1130 dark brown and you have four dark brown pieces that are going to be stitched. Alrighty, so now all of the brown is stitched and it is time to load 1176. The dark green is going to stitch the um, darker green pieces on your block 11. Alrighty, all your dark green is stitched. Now it's time for the lighter green, the 1177 avocado, and your cornstalk right up the center will be stitched next. Alrighty, so now your green is all stitched. It is time to now load 0567 butterfly gold, and we're going to have our sunflower, our corn, and our crow's feet all stitched. Alrighty, that's all stitched. So now it is time to load 1005 black and you're going to have your cute little crow, the eyes and nose of your scarecrow, and then of course the license plate and tires stitched. 
Alrighty, take a look at all that stitch. It's looking super cute. Now we are going to load such a beautiful color, 1293 Deep Nassau Blue, and the sleeves and the hat of your Scarecrow will stitch. Alrighty, then his little hat looks so cute. All right, so now we're going to load 1225 Pastel Pink, and the cute little face or the flesh part of your Scarecrow will be stitched. Alrighty, so everything is stitched except for the word fall. So what we're going to do is load our Filane 34 to 31, which is medium tawny tan in the Filane. And we are going to change from the um, regular needle. We're going to put in our larger needle, the 116. So change that out. And then I'm also going to slow my, my embroidery machine down to the slowest stitch speed just to make it easier. And if you are not using the filet thread, you're going to keep everything the same, except you're going to load the 40 weight rayon of medium tawny tan, the 1056 to stitch the word fall. So just continue on as you've been doing throughout the entire quilt using either filet or rayon. Alrighty, you are all done. Look how cute that looks. Let's look from top to bottom. Everything is stitched out and it's adorable. All right, so don't forget to make your flying geese, and then we'll look forward to next month, which is our Christmas block. Happy stitching!